30 years ago this weekend. Can you believe it? Monday, December the 5th, will mark exactly three decades since we returned to our rightful home. And hasn't the valley seen some incredible moments since then? We'll be using the next 45 minutes to celebrate the successes of our last 30 years. And of course, we also have a match against Cheltenham Town to look forward to. Touching on tonight, the Robins were dumped out of the FA Cup by the competition's lowest ranked club in the first round. But they have gone three matches unbeaten since then, which includes a win last time out in the league against Wickham Wanderers. We're live streaming tonight's game worldwide, including the UK and Ireland. And as always, we have got a lot coming up before kickoff. We'll hear exclusively from manager Ben Garner, who spoke to Charlton TV yesterday afternoon. And we were delighted to see the club's former chairman, Roger Alwyn, visit the training ground recently. So we will hear from the main man himself about what was a rather emotional visit. And we'll also speak to young goalkeeper Ashley Maynard Brewer, who has been looking to make the most of his opportunity recently following a spate of injuries in our goalkeeping department. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to be streaming across the UK and Ireland as worldwide as well. Not just for this evening's game, but for the next five as well. So if you haven't bought your match pass yet, make sure you go and do so. I'm looking after the studio this evening because Scott is pitch side with Curbs. They, of course, both played a massive role in that game back in 1992. I'm delighted to say that I've managed to persuade Brownie to keep me company in the studio tonight and alongside him, a very special guest indeed. Brilliant ball in possession by Johansson. We can run away from Daly. In towards Svensson, and out for Kishishev! Game set match! The Bulgarian has sealed it, and Lee Boya on what used to be home territory hangs his head. of Charlton's win. I don't know what he enjoyed there, seeing the ball in the back of the net or seeing Lee Bowyer in trouble. Welcome to Charlton TV, all the way from Bulgaria, Radistan Kishishev. Kish, it's great to have you here. How does it feel to be back at the Valley? It's great uh, to see that pitch, to see that stadium. Obviously, I play more than 100 games here and I'm enjoyed to, to be here. We loved having you here. But you when think? I saw the goal, <laughs> actually, I, I'm not sure why not put the first goal. This is the second one. I got two goals. Well, that game. This is the second Did one. You? Tell us about the first then. Well, Everton. <laughs> a good one to enjoy. A week enjoy. before. Actually, I, I scored uh, my 50th, 50th game against Everton. Was. I scored a goal. And the next week, next home game, I scored another one. Only two games, two goals <laughs> for that uh, amount of games. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm delighted to have the company. Yeah, it's a joke, team. of course, but uh, <laughs> it's a joke, everything. No, I score only two goals. Well, it's a pleasure to have the company of two defenders alongside <laughs> me. And Brownie, let's talk about the significance of tonight's game. We were together at the 30 years celebration yeah. last night, and it really brought home, actually, how yeah. much hard work went in, the galvanising force of the local community and the support base. It adds another layer to tonight's match, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, there were stories came out last night, Charlotte, if I'm honest, that I hadn't heard. A couple from Roger Alwyn, who, you know, we know is one of the nicest people you'd wish to meet, uh, uh, you know, told some stories last night and told them where you just sat and you just, you couldn't not listen. You couldn't, you, you couldn't turn away and talk to somebody else while he was speaking. You just had to see it out and listen to it. And um, I, I was there with a good friend of mine and he hadn't seen the valley like that. He'd, he'd been here before, but he hadn't been to a night like that. And he just sat there and he said, I had no idea, no idea that that went on, no idea that there was a party form, no idea. And, and people just don't understand. So when you perhaps come now and you see this modern stadium, you see how it is now, you see where the club's been in the last 15, 20 years, you, don't, you need to rewind another 10, another 15. And sometimes in, in the cases of our older sports, go back another 20. And there's been some desperate times here. And this is the culmination of a, thousands and thousands of people's hard work. You know, so uh, these players are very fortunate they get to play in this every week. It wasn't always the case. Yeah, Kish, you were at the event last night as well. Really significant, yeah. really nice to see so many former players together. How did you enjoy it? Yeah, I saw some uh, old faces over there. 
Uh, actually, I came here every every two years or something like this, and uh, I enjoy enjoy the evening and um, especially when uh, Alan Kerbishley talk about the the beginning was uh, for me I, for the first time I I um, hear the story about the beginning of the stadium and. Um, how they uh, create that uh, modern stadium during the years. Of course, uh, when you see the part, the, these 30 years, in the middle of these 30 years, we've been Premier League, which is nice, but now it's shame. We have to, we have to, we have to do the hard work. We have to try to go up because. Uh, it's nice stadium, a nice stadium, nice area, nice people work here, and uh, nice players been here during the years. Rowdy Kish says it there, we've, we've got to do the hard work, and the hard work starts tonight. It's an important occasion, but of course there is a very important league game at hand. Just how significant is it to get a positive result? I think we really need one. You know, I, I, I sit here, you know, most weeks and... and, and you know, it's it's a curbs will say off air. You know, it's 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 hard sometimes. We've had three wins and they've been bunched together. Either side of that's been draws and losses. And and you know, for everybody's sake, you need a lift. We need a result tonight. All right, it's, it's Cheltenham who have got a completely different agenda to us. You know, finishing in this league in any position above relegation is all right for them. We need to start getting back to winning ways. We need to start climbing the league if we've got any aspirations. Um, you know, we I think we're four league games without a win. And even for that alone, you just need to get back to winning ways. A draw, in, in some respects, isn't good enough again tonight. You know, these are teams that we should be getting points against, but none of them are easy. You know, we've got our injury issues. It's, it's there for everybody to see. We've got a stretch squad, um, which makes life a lot more difficult, unfortunately. Yeah, there's some big challenges, and when it comes to selection as well, which leads us quite nicely to speaking to manager Ben Garner. He caught up with Charlton TV yesterday morning. Here's what he had to say. It's said to be a special night on uh, on Friday as the club uh, celebrates the 30th anniversary since uh, the return to the Valley. How aware of you of that story either before you came and, and obviously since? Yeah, not, not too much before I came. Obviously, I, I knew about it and um, I knew about playing at Sellers Park and then obviously returning to the Valley, but not the full details and the amount that went into it. Um, and it was only when going to visit the, the Chart Museum that I really became aware of the full story with regards um, you know, forming a political party to be able to, to campaign and, and, and come home to the valley. Um, and obviously, um, Roger and, and Heather coming in recently and uh, been able to speak to them in detail around the process and what went on and how much it meant to everybody. Um, so it's an incredible story, it, it really is. And, uh, and as you say, it's something to rightly celebrate uh, this evening with the dinner and, and tomorrow night with the game against Cheltenham. And that period in our history really highlighted the power uh, of the club and its supporters. Having been here for a few months now, do you, uh, do you feel like you've had a taste of that? Yeah, very much so. I think, um, for me, I didn't grow up a million miles away from here, so um, I know the area well and I know the, the people in this area well. And um, the supporters here have been fantastic from day one since, since I walked in. And um, not just of us at first team level, but I look at all aspects of, of, of the club, with the academy, with the ladies team, with the, with the trust. Um, you know, all aspects of the club and, and how much that means to the community and the supporters. Um, it really is a strength for the football club. And as well as the anniversary, we do of course uh, have, a, have a game against Cheltenham to focus on. The game comes ahead of two very long trips north next week. Do you ever to bear that in mind when planning for, for Friday's game? No, we're looking at Friday in, in isolation to be honest. That's, that's the focus this week. Um, we'll, then look, we'll then look at next week. I've got some thoughts in the back of my mind in terms of next week, but right now the, the focus is, is purely on Cheltenham Friday night and, um, and getting a much needed league win and, and getting momentum back into our league campaign. And there are, uh, Cheltenham are unbeaten, uh, three unbeaten since the shock defeat in the FA Cup. Uh, what can we expect from, from them? Yeah, they've done really well in recent weeks. Had a, a really good home win against Wickham and, um, and they managed to get a really good point away at Ipswich um, the game before that in the league. So um, they're well organised and, and very well structured. I think they've um, progressed as the season has gone on and I think Wade's doing a really good job there. So we know the challenges that, that they will pose and, and probably can predict what type of game we think it, it's going to be from our perspective. Um, we've prepared on that, we've worked on that and we have to make sure now that we're, we're putting in the performance that um, what ultimately gets the points that we want. 
And finally, Friday night football under the lights can often bring a, a good atmosphere in the stands. It'd be a great start to this uh, to the weekend uh, to get this weekend off with a win, wouldn't it? Especially with uh, England's World Cup campaign also. Uh, going into the knockout stages of the weekend? Yeah, it would be. I think the, the games under the lights this year, I think, have been really good. Uh, I think there's been a, a great atmosphere. And, and me personally, I, I love, I love midweek games or Friday night games under the lights. I think it creates a different type of atmosphere. Um, I think everyone's generally finished their week, their working week, and um, it's a nice thing to do on a, on a Friday night. So um, I think with with the um, let's say the occasion as well as the game, hopefully that will that will draw a big crowd and create a really special atmosphere. And I know when that's the case, the players thrive off that. They they really do. It gives them a lift and gives them extra energy. So we're looking forward to the game, and hopefully it can be a, a good evening all round. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, Terry. Great, as always, to hear from the manager. So here is confirmation of this evening's starting eleven. Some significant changes made, Brownie, particularly obviously with the goalkeeper and the defence. Give me your initial assessment of the lineup for tonight. Surprised, like really surprised to see that lineup. But um, you know, Ben will have his, his ideas why and the reasons why uh, that he's, he's changed to this formation. And, and, and you know, that is a young backline. You know, Marshall by a ex more experienced player in, in Ryan Innes, but that is two youngsters flanking him either side. Uh, and you will have to go to him for the explanation of that. Sam Lavelle on the bench. Uh, is it because we've got a long midweeker in the FA Cup? Does he want to get through in that? I would still say the league's far more important. I mean, there's a risk to this, to this team selection without any shadow of a doubt. Um, and on one hand, you're really excited to see youngsters get their chance, see how they perform. And on another, you're a bit nervous because I think we've got to get back to winning ways. And the last thing you want is these youngsters under pressure, you know, home in a performance that doesn't quite work. So look, it's, it's a risk without any shadow of a doubt, the changes that have been made. Um, but look forward to, to, to them taking the opportunity. Kish Brownie alludes to the point there, it's quite a bold start in 11 for the manager. You've been a defender. For these youngsters, is there yeah. perhaps an element of fearlessness as well as of course pressure? Have. I didn't follow much uh, Charlton as a personally players, what they did, what they can. But when they see the formation, when they see the shape, it's quite modern, 3-4-3, three, three, as, as a tele here. You have to see over there how they be on the pitch. But it's quite offensive, quite offensive. Doesn't matter who is who. And uh, I really believe that uh, doesn't matter how old are you. If you've got qualities with, with manager behind you and give you a chance, you can get it. And ho hopefully they will show today some offensive football, some nice uh, combination and score goals. Score goals. And on that note, Brownie, a mm. first start for Jayasimi, who we haven't seen in the start in 11 for a while now. He's making a return back from injury, leading the line. And that in itself, again, will command a lot of responsibility tonight. Absolutely. I mean, he's been out a while and he would he get 10, 15 minutes the other day. And he did look OK when he come on. My, my issue with that is when someone's been out that long, uh, and you start them, how long they're going to last. But at least you know you've got half an hour in chucks to, to, to come on late in the game if we're, if we're chasing. I mean, if you just, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about how young that side is. Even, even Albie Morgan, you know, still only 22. You've got Ragsaki, 19, 20. Setting on still young. Ness, Mitchell. You know, that's quite a young side, isn't it? A really young side. And you've got Jayasimi returning from injury. Yeah, look. I mean, I'm, I'm sure Ben will argue that he's been forced into these changes and been forced to play younger players before they're ready, purely because we just don't seem to have the strength in depth to cover the injuries we've got. Um, have we got the leader here? We've got, that's one of our biggest issues, Kish, to be, to be brutally honest. Um, in terms of, you, 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 know, you can only go from your own experiences, yeah. we would have four or five leaders in our team and you, you didn't have to wear the armband to be a leader back in our day. Everybody was you know, quite good at being the leader. This is this team does struggle with that. It struggles yeah. to have somebody that, you know, really takes the ball by the horns and leads. But, you know, they've got a responsibility, they've got the shirt. I mean if you're if you if you're Mitchell, if you're Ness, if you're you know, Zach and Luke, you've you have you have got to take this opportunity as best you can. You know, it's it's not it's not a night to get nervous really. They're gonna yeah. and, and they're gonna yeah, they're gonna get nervous, but it's a, it's really is a night to stay quite calm, stay quite composed and uh, and deliver a performance. You know, we, 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 both of us have at one point or another been given that shirt for the first time. 
and that's your time to step through the door and, and, and try and keep it for another week and another week and then suddenly that turns into 10, 15, 20 appearances. But yeah, I, I've got to be honest, when a, when a team comes through, it was a little bit of an eyebrow raiser. You know, oh. It's a moment, it's an opportunity and let's hope those young players step up on what is, again, as we mentioned, a really special occasion. As always for now though, let's have a little look at the league standings. We'll start with the bottom half as we're currently sat in 14th, although a win tonight could take us as high as 9th, depending on results elsewhere, of course. The bottom four remain unchanged following the last set of league results, while Cambridge United dropped to 20th following a 1-0 loss at home to Accrington Stanley almost a fortnight ago. Oxford United, Port Vale and Lincoln were the teams to rise above us, while Bolton Wanderers and Barnsley leapfrogged Portsmouth and Derby County to return to the top six. And it's as you were with the top four, though Ipswich Town capitalised on Plymouth Argyle's two-all draw at Burton Albion by beating Exeter City 2-0 to cut the gap to just two points. Meanwhile, there's a nine-point gap between third place Sheffield Wednesday and fourth place Peterborough United. Now, Brownie, that top four is really or the top three is almost really beginning to break away now do you think they can be caught no not particularly um it, it, it's two from three i think they're so strong the top three what i would say is you concentrate on four down because the rest is quite level myself and scott have spoken about you know the barnsley game up there we lost three one but we were excellent for 60 minutes you know we were in control of that game until we conceded and then we sort of capitulated there isn't a massive amount but we've got to start being consistent um it, i'm afraid it all goes back to strength in depth and plugging holes you know with youngsters that might not be quite ready but if you look at 9 10 and 11 lincoln port vale exeter you know you just wouldn't have expected to have seen them 9 10 and 11 and now I think that just goes to show that the league isn't as strong under that top three. It just isn't. And if you can find a level of consistency and you can keep everybody fit, you can cut, you know, get a run of results together, you'll climb back up. But we don't want to get too much more away from that sixth spot than we are now. I think there's a, a, a three teams there with games in hand. If they win them, we're nine points behind. That's not insurmountable, but it's starting to get a bit big. Kish, if we were to condense that league table and only focus on home games, Charlton would be in the top six. Only that is, if, we, if only if we were here at the Valley, which indicates how much of an impact it has. When you were playing here, how much did that home support play a difference? Of course, the, the stadium, the crowd was full. Always uh, 26,000, 25, 26,000. They, uh, they help us to, to give our, our best. But um, as you say, we are most strongly at home. That's mean. Brownie said before, the team is young. That means uh, at the moment we still try to to get the the right the right thing to play the same as a home team, get away, play exactly the same. It's difficult for the young players. They I almost need that first touch, that first pass, that first bit of yeah, execution to very, build their confidence. Very difficult. Yeah. Only only the big teams. They don't need, it doesn't matter where they play. They play exactly the same, exactly the same style and get exactly the same results. Doesn't matter their home or way. Yeah, big teams mean big teams premiership, big teams championship, big teams here. But as we see, uh, Ipswich, Bolton, Sheffield Wednesday, they are members, premiership how many years they have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're up there a lot. The, 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 the league one's got a lot of old ex yes. Premier League sides and in it. With uh, yeah. many years in Premier League. Yeah. That means uh, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. So many big teams in that league. Big teams in it. Bradley, can I get your um, opinion on something? Because it's a very congested Sean, time of the year. Fashion, you'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> Focus on the football view. Um, it's a congested time of the calendar year. We've got the World Cup in the mix as well. Yeah. We're playing on a Friday evening. It gives yeah. us the opportunity, if we get a good result tonight, to get three points under our belt ahead of, of a very tough week on the road. It's yeah. a bit of a, a funny time of year. So do you think there's any added advantage that we are playing tonight at all? No, I, I don't actually. Well, I, I, the reason I say that is because if you don't play tonight and all the results go against you, you're under a bit more pressure tomorrow to get the result. So I, I, it doesn't... I'm just wondering, you, perhaps if the weekend yeah, rest I, going into two long trips, perhaps? Uh, yeah, well, that is a consideration. And, and Ben Garner will tell you that it's a massive plus. 
It, it didn't used to make any difference to me. And you can ask Kish. A game was a game. If I was playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday, it, it didn't matter. You just knew the schedule, and you you know you got through the, the game. You rest it. Yeah, you rest, and you, you you make sure you get your sleeping patterns right. You rest properly. You don't do anything you shouldn't. You should yeah, be able to get for, through for one week or yeah. for ten days. You can make a big difference in on the table. Yeah, Maybe definitely. you can jump with five, seven places up. Of course, the other side as well. I mean, but I, the the one thing that does throw you out a little bit is 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 the. Uh, I mean, that's that's two long trips. Stockport and then Morecambe is like oh. the end of the world. So uh, there is talk of um, there is talk of maybe potentially the team staying up after Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday. But then there's a cost implication to that. You know, you imagine keeping the, the, the buses, the, you know, the, the rooms for you know, the players, it, the dinners. It's you got to find a training ground to train on. You know, so there is a cost implication to that. You know, and I, I just wonder if we were sitting fourth. <laughs> you do, yeah, you know, but yeah, they're, they're, they're not decisions we have Bradley, to make. can I say something? Yeah, crack on. What do you mean long trip? Do you know? <laughs> do you know in <laughs> Russia? Yeah. We, they flew from Moscow to Novosibirsk for eight hours flight. Yeah. It's a Eight big, hours fly. It's a big country, though, isn't it? They play away. Yeah. Yeah. They, they play yeah. away. Yeah, Nine yeah. hours fly. Yeah. Well, yeah. there are so many games going on with the World Cup as well. I don't think it matters what day of the week. I can barely keep up. And of course, there is a full fixture <laughs> schedule this weekend as well across Sky Bet League One with six games happening tonight. Five tomorrow and one on Sunday when Wickham Wanderers host Portsmouth in front of the Sky Sports cameras. And that's one to keep an eye out for because it's been billed by Sky Sports as the first ever EFL innovation game with supporters set to be given more behind the scenes access than ever before. They have uh, cameras in the dressing room for that one. That would have been interesting back in your time, I'm sure, guys. And in terms of tonight's fixtures, two playoff occupants go head to head at the Western Homes Stadium as Peterborough United host Barnsley. Tabletop as Plymouth Argyle welcome Port Vale to Home Park. And second place Ipswich Town take on Fleetwood Town in Suffolk. Elsewhere, Morecambe, who we mentioned we visit next weekend, host Exeter City. And Bolton Wanderers welcome Bristol Rovers. Tomorrow's standout feature undoubtedly comes from Pride Park, where Paul Warren's Derby County side square off with Darren Moore's Sheffield Wednesday. So, chaps, if we were to rewind the time and put a camera in Alan Kerbishley's dressing room, give us an insight to what we might have well, seen. Well, I've always said, you know, he was never unfair. You know, and the only time he was unfair to me, I bit back and he, he really lost his temper. Um, the, the biggest thing with Kerbs is, is that he would, he would towards sort of the latter stages I was here, he'd take a minute because he knew, you know, from his earlier time, you're growing as a manager as you're going. And people don't understand that you're going to make lots of mistakes. You know, you can be working as a manager for three, four, five years, you're still learning, all right? And you grow as a person. And funny enough, the further you get away from your playing career, the calmer you get in terms of your assessment. But I, I, that's what I found anyway. When I first started managing, and I was relatively not that far away from my career, I was still quite aggressive. I was still, you know, I was looking at players going, you can do more than that, you're better there. Passion. And then, passion. yeah, passion. I and mean, then as you do your badges and you coach more in the training field, and you, you do start to just take it a little bit easier and, and, and be a bit calmer about what you deliver. Um, Curbs was always fair. So if you got criticism, generally more often than not, you deserved it. But he wasn't afraid to put you in your place. Absolutely gave you a, you know, a lesson. Oh, I want to say something. Go for it. My English was worse that time. And he, when he's screaming against me, I said, yes, yes, Kerbs, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he would have screamed at you too, man. He would have screamed at no, you too. No, he's, he was angry against me also, like yeah. everyone. Yeah. Of course, when you make a mistake, you go through in front of your face said, what the fuck are you doing? No, 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 no. Kish, that's your first <laughs> fine of the evening, OK? That's 20 pounds well, I mean, in the king. There's, there's, no, there's <laughs> no denying, Charlotte, he would say that, but, we, you know. Kish, how it's not you... a typical English word. That no, one. no, it's no, not a typical word. Oh, okay. We leave that when we, we, we park that. <laughs> yeah, let's park that. Actually, do you know what? Let's take a break from previewing tonight all, in, um, all together, shall we? And uh, give you some club updates, as always, and we will start with some ticketing news. We'd like to remind fans that half-season tickets are now on sale. We've enjoyed a season worth of goals, excitement and drama in SE7 already this campaign and we want you to be here to feel 
all of it in the second half of the season. Prices start at £160 for adults and you can get yours now by heading to booking.cafc.co.uk. And we've spoken about it a lot this evening already. After tonight's game, the Addicts will be back in action on Wednesday night when they head to Stockport County for an FA Cup replay. The match has been broadcast live on ITV4 and the ITV hub in the UK. And we do believe that it will also be available on some overseas stations as well. So if you are tuning in from abroad, then please check your TV station listings. And if we can come out on top, then we'll face Warsaw at the Valley in the third round. That tie, should we progress, will be played at the start of January. We'll hopefully be in a position to confirm a date and ticketing information for the Warsaw match later this week. And I say that with my fingers firmly crossed. Stay in with Cup Football and tickets for our Carabao Cup fourth round match against Premier League club Brighton and Hove Albion are now on sale. The West Stand Lower, East Stand and the Covered End Upper and Lower are all open to Charlton supporters and tickets have been selling pretty fast for the match. Seats are priced at £15 for adults anywhere inside the valley for the match, whilst over 65s and under 21s are £10. Under 11s can attend the match for just £1 when accompanied by an adult. As always, head to that website booking.cafc.co.uk to get your tickets. All fans, and particularly those in the UK and Ireland, are reminded that they can still purchase a Charlton TV World Cup pass that will grant you access to watch all of the club's next six league matches live on Charlton TV, including tonight's clash with Cheltenham Town. We're able to show our next six league matches live on Charlton TV as UEFA's Article 48, which normally prevents the live streaming of league matches in the UK, has been temporarily dropped due to the FIFA World Cup. The price of the pass will reduce by £10 after tonight's match and by a further £10 after each game that it covers is played. You can purchase your pass now by heading to that website once again, cafc.co.uk. Moving on to the Charlton women's team who made it three 2-1 victories in a row by beating Bristol City in the Continental Cup at the Oakwood on Sunday. England Youth International Kira Skills netted a double for Karen Hills' side and that win added to their recent successes against Crystal Palace and Durham in the Barclays Women's Championship. The Addicts are next in action on Sunday when they host Sheffield United at the Oakwood and fans will be able to enjoy every kick live and for free on Charlton TV. Now, I don't know where my invite was for this, but Brownie, I know that you and the lads had a lovely time at the Meantime Brewery last week, and I'm delighted to say that the club have agreed a multi-year partnership with the locally-based company. The brewery is just over a mile away from the valley, and as well as them now providing new beers here, they've also helped the club to replace much of its pint-pouring infrastructure. This should result in fans being able to get a much crisper pint on match days from now on. You see that there? See that picture? He was in competition. He was going, my pint's miles better than yours. Look at yours. Yours is awful. And then it turns out he's been pouring pints since like seven in the there east end go. of London. That doesn't, yeah. that doesn't he, he was so competitive brownie. on the day. It was a joke. It <laughs> you was and a Kurt's joke. in competition. Well, yesterday, the three of us all had the pleasure of attending a very special anniversary dinner. And you can see on the screen now, a host of Charlton Legends were able to be part of that dinner. The event was actually attended by over 200 supporters as well as a host of former players, directors, staff members. And aside from plenty of stories being told, a great deal of money was also raised for the club's charitable arm, the Community Trust. We had a great night, didn't yeah, we, Brownie? We did. But you see that shot there? Yeah. I strategically stood next to Kish so I'd look all right in my gear. <laughs> Mustard tokish. <laughs> Defend your outfit. It's, it's black. T-shirt. <laughs> right. Well, listen, Brighty was all over me about my fashion. He said, "You better." He said, "Stand next to Kish. You'll be all right if you stand next to Kish." Well, look, guys, but yeah, I'm we not did have, a good have any criticism of you both tonight. I think you both I look incredibly from smart. Of yeah, I'd very. No, I'd stop 20 it. Twenty degrees <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a good night, Charlotte. A really good night, and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, in terms of the trust, you know, Jason Morgan got got a lot of plaudits, and I, I, I will say this: I think we I think we should acknowledge, you know, all the organisers of that event last night. I think they worked their socks off um, uh, in, in terms of the amount of work that goes in to make sure that that, that happens. I think Steve Sutherland, uh, Keith Peacock. Jason Morgan, you know, did a very, very good job in getting that, that organised and together. It was an absolutely wonderful night and lots of stories were shared. And as I mentioned earlier, Scott 
is Pitch Side to relive some of those amazing stories back from the return to the valley in 1992. He caught up with Curbs earlier this evening. Thanks, Charlotte. And yes, I'm delighted to be joined by some guy called Alan Kerbishley. Never worked with him before, so no idea right. how this is going to go. I'm having a look, but you right? You're asking me what yeah. the questions are. Yeah. Go well, on. Why don't I just ask the questions yeah, go and, on then, then. and then you'll know, won't you? Look, first one up, well, we are, of course, celebrating the 30th anniversary of our return to the Valley. Take us back to the sort of lead up, the, the, the week leading up to the game. And also, how difficult was it to pick the team? Was Gritty always first <laughs> name on the team sheet? Well, we discussed that last night, actually, at uh, the dinner. And uh, no, we, we weren't doing so well. It was a bit off and uh, we're playing uh, Portsmouth and they had one or two strengths. And I've been thinking about it during the week. and. And in the end, we got to about Thursday, Thursday afternoon, and Gritty gave me a Chinese burn <laughs> <laughs> and said, uh, I think I should play. No, no, we decided that, that Gritty was going to I wanted to put Darren Pitcher in midfield just to give it a little bit more oomph. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so the only way could, we could do that is to put Gritty right back. And it wasn't sentiment. Obviously, you know, we wanted him to win the game, so it was the best team we could put out. And uh, so Gritty come in at right back and uh, Mr. Pardew come out, which uh, he wasn't happy about. He was still he? resents even, to t even today. today. Um, but that was it. And, uh, you know, we made a decision. But I remember coming over on the day before the game and just walking because the port cabins were over there and just walking onto the onto the pitch and the ground. And the tarmac was being laid along here, but it was raining and there was a leak in the covered end. There was a leak and it was just dropping down. You know, onto someone's seat, and I said to Gritty, "Blind me, you know, you wouldn't like to be sitting in that in that seat tomorrow." And uh, he went, "You know what? Whoever's sitting there won't be bothered." No. You know, because we're coming back. What it means, that absolutely. Was their seat. And I always remember that. So uh, yeah, it was a big leak coming down there. And uh, anyway, that was it. Gritty was in the side, and uh, we just got on with it. The mate. rest is history, absolutely. One of the iconic sound bites from that day. What was your sort of let's have plenty of shots yeah, team yeah. talk? It keeps coming out, doesn't it? I know, yeah. it, it does. It, how aware were you of all the cameras being around or, or, or were you able to put those to one side? Well, to be fair, no. It, we wasn't aware because it was the first time we'd probably been in the spotlight, you know. We'd been at Upton Park and, you know, bobbling around there and uh, coming back to the big game. And, and I always remember Brian Moore was the, was, was the uh, commentator. My next door neighbour. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was a really big day. and sort of Jimmy Smith said to me after the game Jimmy Smith was my old manager at, Port, at uh, Birmingham and he was the manager of Portsmouth and uh, he just come in after the game and said he was always going to win it was your day Charlton's day and it's great for you and whatever and it was it was a little bit of a carnival atmosphere but you know when the game got started we scored obviously through Walshy and uh, I don't think we ever looked like we were going to lose no and it worked out fantastically well. It certainly did. Uh, just explain the significance of the day for the fans as well. I mean, were you and Gritty as managers kind of able to treat it as a normal game or was that just impossible to do because of the, no, it, all the media attention? It was and everything? impossible. Because, you know, I always remember Lenny, Lenny Lawrence when he left and he, and, you know, he basically said to the two of us, look, just don't get bogged down with the valley. You know, it, it wore him down a little bit, Lenny. And, uh, you know, we were going to go back, when we're going to go back, etc. He said, just don't let it wear you down. And we didn't really. It was Upton Park and, you know, the team was playing well. We thought we had a decent side and etc. But we had to come back. Yeah. You know, we had to come back. And, you know, I always go back to the fact that, um, you know, the seven-year-old kids that lived in Charlton, you know, we moved away, were suddenly 14 and they're supporting other clubs. Yeah. They had, we had to come back and we had to start again. Do you know, we could talk for hours, but I'll only ask one more question. Hopefully you're happy with the question so Go far. Yeah. Just, I mean, you, you've been asked this a lot and you will be asked. The, the significance of the club coming back here and having its own spiritual home. Yeah, I, I said on the day we become a club again and we did. I mean, you know, as managers and as a manager, you're trying to attract players to come to the club and you ain't got a ground, you know, it's very... Oh, well, so we, we train over there, but actually we play over there, <laughs> you know, train at Sparrows Lane, but we play at Upton Park, you know, it's very, very difficult until we come back here and, and made it as one. And, you know, I always remember, I always remember the picture of Roger Orwin opening the gates, you know, and uh, he told a story last night, it was quite funny, but opening the gates, and that was the start of it. Mm. I mean, when you look at where we were, and I, and I said last night to Ben Garner, I saw Ben Garner last night, and I said, look, not one of your squad was born when we came back here, <laughs> you know, it, it was so long ago, and, you know, it took a lot of people, 
a massive effort to get us back in. Yeah. Not just me, Gritty, the players, you know, the, the, the board and everybody else. It took a massive effort to get us back here, and this is what we got. Yeah, absolutely. Looks fantastic still, doesn't it? Charlotte, as I say, t <laughs> him and I could go on for hours. <laughs> we'll leave it there. Back to you. Thank you, Scott. Twinning alongside Curves there, pitch side looking amazing as always. We're going to move on now to our next interview because there was another very pivotal figure in the return to the Valley and that was club chairman Robert Alwyn who paid a very emotional visit back to the training ground at Sparrows Lane. Let's have a look. Roger, it's a bit of a cold, wet November's day. Uh, so we're having to do this inside but it must have been really nice for you to, to reminisce about uh, time's gone by. Well, I think it's probably 25 years since we, I've been in the training ground. Um, it's the most magnificent place now. I gather it's 48 acres and it's been memory lane. It's been extraordinary. And we, we bought it in, or Michael Norris and I bought it in 1987 when we had a porter cabin at Selhurst Park and eventually had this. So this was Charlton's first home five years before the valley. The club was obviously at a bit of a, a low ebb in the late 80s. How important has that purchase of this training ground proved to be? Uh, to me, if anything, this was the most practical thing that we ever did because it actually gave Charlton back a bit of heart um, and, a, and a place 20 minutes from, from the valley. So I've always thought this was probably, if I ever did anything, was any good for the club. I always thought this was probably the best thing that we ever did. And uh, you've obviously been here today with Jason Morgan, a former colleague of yours, and Keith Peacock and Tracy Lieber. And how nice has it been to go, oh, go over some old memories? Fantastic. And I can't believe this is now a 48-acre site. When we bought it, it was 18 acres with just the one, the old cricket pavilion, and everything took place in the old cr cricket pavilion. Now the facilities are magnificent. You've, uh, you've obviously seen the new building just over to your right, you've been in the old building as well which is the one that you would have purchased. Um, some things haven't changed at all though have they so that must have been nice to... Yeah I, no it's, it, it's, it's nice and there's a, such a good feel to see people, the players back on the old pitch and, and to meet the ground Paul Geary again who I haven't seen for years who told me I employed him 29 years ago. So he's been here ever since and it looks in such good shape and of course all the, the flower beds and the fir trees were planted by my other half in 1987 so uh, amazing memories you know we, 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 we've just been like we're a couple of oldies but we've been like a couple of kids coming here fantastic yeah you mentioned uh, Heather's trees and uh, flower beds and obviously the building still here as well. How excited have you been about coming back? Oh, we've, we've been talking, I think our family, we've told our family obviously we're coming back and we've honestly been really so excited as a couple of oldies and just to see it and you can't be disappointed. It is, it is an extraordinary place now, fantastic. And just looking forward, we've got the uh, anniversary dinner to come, how much are you looking forward to that and seeing some more old faces? That'll be reminiscent night as well I mean fantastic and all those memories I mean one of the most extraordinary memories I had and I didn't know until recently that when I opened the gates on the 5th of December 92 with the key the keys the door gates had been locked that morning and the key had been thrown into the key box and apparently there were 200 keys in there with nothing on there and believe it or not it was the second key that somebody lifted out. We could have been standing there half the day trying to find the key, but as it turned out, um, obviously somebody was shining upon us that day. So, no, um, the memories of doing that, I mean, never forgotten. And just lastly on today, you've obviously been shown around by Tracy. You've told a brilliant story about her husband, Carl, and you've met Miles, her son, as well. That must have been yeah, really I mean, nice. That, I mean, Carl was here in 87 um, as a YTS player, um, very young. <clears throat> and one of the reasons that we wanted, the first thing we did in the, in the pavilion was to put um, uh, a kitchen in and feed everybody. 
because Carl was tall and needed, needed a lot of food. And, 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 and we thought, well, it was better than all the players going up the road and buying so we could food that probably they shouldn't have and we could actually feed them and give them a basic diet. And same, I, nothing's changed. You know, it's, um, for, for us to be here today is, is just extraordinary. A um, real walk down memory lane. walk down memory lane and I think the, the word legend is used too often nowadays but it is certainly reserved for the man we can see on our screen now chatting away to Curbs and, and Brownie we heard those stories last night yeah. amazing to hear them again just underline for us once more the work done by Roger and many other people and just how important it was at that time as well well it was pivotal because you know we were playing away at Selhurst and then we went across to West Ham and uh, you know, the fight show I think not just by Roger and Heather, but uh, there was other directors as well, Martin Simons, uh, you know, all played a massive part. The fans, you know, played their part in walking down and, and putting the party together. Um, you know, it's extraordinary, really, you know, when, when you think about it. But I, I was sort of listening to that and it took me back to 1988 when I first joined. And that, I mean, that hallway is, un I'm sorry, the main building is unrecognisable to what it was back in the day. And he, Roger speaks about the kitchen, and I remember Barbara Yarnton, you know, dishing me up soup and bread. That's what the apprentices got back in the day. You got a little bowl of soup and a little bit of French bread, and that, that, was, your, that was your food for the day. But it, it, was a, it was a critical step forward in the process of us becoming what we became, was getting back, getting something that was our own, that we could drive into every day and train every day. And then as we saw this develop over the years, you know, as we got a little bit more successful and a little bit more money was generated and we were able to sign a few players, you know, it was, it, was, it was a real privilege for me, coming from where my background down in Brighton, to come up at that particular time. And I had no idea how special that time was going to be. And I had to learn about this, what Roger's talking about, the, the 10 years previous, where they lost their home and fought to get it back. Um, and for a short period, that's what they showed us in, in a montage video, was, was all the shots of, 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 of people doing what they did to make sure we got back. So it's, it's a period that has to be celebrated and never forgotten. It's fascinating to hear your perspective and the impact it had as a player's identity with a football club. And I mean, it's so fitting. We can see Roger there who's testing out whether the ball was <laughs> fit enough for this evening's game and uh, the players and management involved in that return back in December 1992. We'll be walking out with the first team this evening. And it's really interesting, isn't it, Kish? Because we see the referees yeah. make their way, the old, the new, together, but somehow, it all remains the same at Charlton, and that DNA throughout the generations is a part of our identity. Roger, he loves football, probably when, when he gets the team and the, the, the whole of the facility. But it's a change actually, Charlotte. If you, if you think about ownership in general, it used to be local people, you know, that were not necessarily very wealthy, but were wealthier than normal and they would own the football clubs. But there's, there wasn't huge amounts of money in football back then. You know, it was, very still, it was still very much community-based. And although Charlton has gone on to remain very community-based, obviously you've seen ownership changes up and down the country where we've seen, and I'm not disrespecting this, I'm just saying it's a fact that we've seen a lot of foreign owners and the likes of Roger have, have sort of slowly disappeared out of the game and gone into the background. And, you know, there was a real family feel when he was in charge about how this football club was run. Great to see all those legends and former players on the pitch. I did mention to you earlier that we would have an interview from Ashley maynard Brewer, but because we've been talking so much and hearing so many fantastic stories, we haven't quite had time to show you that. But do head to our YouTube channel and on social media to catch that interview. He doesn't feature in tonight's starting 11. It's Craig McElvery in goal. And Chaps, can I get your final thoughts before we hand over to our commentary team? Yeah, I think we've got to start really positive, be on the front foot. Um, Ryan Innes has definitely got to show leadership qualities with the two players he's got either side of him, got to control them, got to communicate with them. Um, like I say, the one real big positive of this season is we've only lost once at home and, and we've got to continue that run. We just, do not lose tonight. I think losing tonight will be a, a big blow and we'll get a bit, a bit of a reaction. Kish, I know you haven't had many opportunities yeah. to watch Charlton, but you're here with us tonight. What do you want to see from Ben Garner's team? I want to see a nice win. I want to see from this young team to show the best as they can. And uh, what, what they need, they need first five, ten, ten minutes just to 
to give the right pass, the right crosses, the right, the right tackle, just to believe in their, their selves. And if they got quality, they will win easily. Let's hope so. Hey, well, let me pass you over now to our commentary team for this evening, Terry Smith and Greg Stubley. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, Brownie. Thank you, Kish. Good to see legends in the studio. And uh, we, uh, you would have noticed that uh, there was a line of legends coming out onto the pitch. And 